everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. And I think it was last week I sent out the video for the Generate Blocks Generate Press Gutenberg plugin and had some questions about building a site using Generate Blocks. What are the particular advantages and what can you do with Generate Blocks over, let's say, another gen uh, Gutenberg plugin or even sort of a page builder? So Let's just frame that last one, you know, Gutenberg versus a page builder. We know that Gutenberg is not nearly as advanced as a Beaver Builder or, or an Elementor or a Breezy. Though they are making motions in that direction, I don't think they'll ever fill the shoes of that compat or that uh, technology or capabilities. Um, but what you can do is build some really good looking websites. And I want to kill two birds with one stone today. Number one is showing off, uh, you know, one or two of these new starter sites in the Generate Press uh, Pro or Premium Edition. I'll even take a look at this one today. This dev theme this is one that really caught my eye uh, by Mike Oliver. And there's a whole bunch of new Mike Oliver templates that you can take a look at. But let's just start with activating one of those starter sites. We'll go to the dashboard. That's Generate Press by default that we just looked at. We'll go to the Generate Press section. I already have the site library module enabled and we will activate that dev version. I did find out that this is a randomized viewing, so it's never in the same spot. Here it is, dev. We'll hit details, we'll import the options and this will pull in all of the options needed for the customizer to set uh, a lot of the customizer settings. I really like the approach Generate Press takes to the site library module. I mean, every major theme has uh, starter sites, template sites to begin with. They all have a fairly good, I haven't gone through a walkthrough where I was really scratching my head, um, but Generate Press sort of just feels m the most efficient, right? It feels the most lightweight and the quickest to get the stuff done. So I authorize that, yes, I know this will destroy my site <laughs> if I already have an active site. Uh, I'm going to import the content. And you'll see here, it's downloading the demo content right below it. It shows it's gonna install and activate generate blocks, lightweight social icons, and MC4WP plugin. It does all of that stuff. And it says, all done, you're ready to go. So when we view the site, here it is. This is that dev theme, super fast, super efficient. Uh, it's a software, SaaS, services, modern take uh, on web design. It's funny, I kind of reviewed the Bloxy themes app theme. Uh, last week, and uh, here we are again looking at a software-esque type of theme. But this is all done with Generate Blocks and Gutenberg. So if we just take a look, that's the homepage. Uh, if we go to the services section, you can see the, the use of heroes, the typography is very nice. Um, these different blocks are, uh, they all have a nice attention to detail, clean, modern, uh, website development with a sort of checklist off to the right, different use of iconography. If we go back to the top, we go to the about page. What I really like about what Mike has done and Generate Press, Mike, Generate Press and team <laughs> have done with this um, is each page gets its own unique block uh, or its own unique style set of these Generate blocks. And it's, it's really cool. So this would be the about page, meeting the team. Um, the work page has its own sort of, you know, unique look and feel with these heroes. Of course, they look great with the colors used and the imagery, but, you know, you have the ability to edit all that stuff as well. So if we edit this page, uh, you know, some of the questions were, you know, what can we do with generate blocks? How is it different? That kind of thing. When we take a look at this section, uh, this is a generate block section. It's built by a couple different things here. So if we open up the generate, or if we open up the Gutenberg uh, list, you can see first and foremost, it's built with a grid, right? So we're, we're at first and foremost using the grid uh, generate blocks block, and that is going to give us uh, that two column setup. And then within the two columns on the right here, we have the image block. This is just straight up Gutenberg. And on the left, we have uh, the heading block or the headline block as it's known uh, for generate blocks. And the nice thing about every generate block is you get all of this stuff. You get the typography where we can modify the typography, spacing adjustments where we can make all these modifications. And you can see here it came with a negative 15 on the top and a 30 on the bottom, right? And those are all the predefined th uh, settings uh, from this dev starter site. Uh, the colors for the icon, and the icon in this case, uh, I believe is this line right here. 
Uh, of course, the icon section. Yep, there it is. You can go in here and change that icon out, um, make any other modifications. And of course, the advanced section if you want to target some CSS stuff. So it's, again, to repeat, it is a container. And then within that container, we have the grid that makes up the left and the right, the headline, the paragraph, and then the buttons, right? And this is a button here. And you have the same uh, options uh, that you would across any button, um, you know, for generate blocks. Now, what happens if you want to use this hero layout on another page? Well, I think what really differentiates generate blocks from, let's say, another uh, one that I really like is CoBlocks uh, Gutenberg plugin. Works really well with Richard Tabor's themes. In his plugin, he has all of these predefined blocks which make up, you know, let's say a hero like this. And it might, he might call it a services hero. And it comes predefined, it has everything in there. Uh, and you just drop it in and it's pre-formatted. You just go in and put in the text. Generate Blocks is taking sort of the uh, opposite approach where it's giving you the big fundamental blocks that you need to build these bigger blocks. <laughs> a lot of blocks happening here, right? So you're going to build the headline, the button, you're going to put it in a grid. And then what you're going to do or what the, the idea is, is now you're going to just save it and reuse it for another page. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Let's select the top level container, which I already did. You can see the outline around all of these blocks. And we're going to add that to the reusable blocks Column will say services one block, block, and save. And let's pull up another one. Let's go to the home page. And let's say I want to save this features. So I'll grab that container, add to reusable blocks. We'll call this features one block, save. We'll go to a new page. That's test, add a block. We'll go to the reusable section. You'll see the services one block, which we just saved. And I'm gonna add one more. Features one block. So those are our two blocks. And where I really hope that Generate Press, you know, moves into in the future, and I don't know if it's if Gutenberg is technically ready for it yet, and we're gonna take it uh, take a look at something really quick so you can see this. Um, but I would love to have when you import a new starter site to import these reusable blocks right out of the gate. That way, you know, we're ready to go and uh, I think like most of us, we're gonna see this home page, these services page, and, and we might not use all these blocks. But we might say, boy, I'd really like to mix and match. Take that block from that page, this block from that home page, and then combine the two like sort of we've done here and build out our own landing page. So we'll hit publish. View the page. There it is, right? I mean, it's exactly what we saw uh, in the Gutenberg editor screen. Now, here's the one caveat to this. What we have to do, so we can't edit this, right? These are reusable blocks. We can't edit them until we hit edit and then we can go in and modify this. But you'll pay note, uh, pay attention to um, what you're doing is editing the global block. So if you change this here on this page, it's going to change it across the entire page uh, or across the entire site because you're editing a reusable block. So what we want to do, I don't know why I hit edit, but we want to go and convert this into a regular block. Now, once we convert this into a regular block, it is no, no longer tied to the reusable blocks, and now we can edit it specifically for this page. So you might get into a workflow where you're, you know, installing one of these starter sites, you're ready to build it out for a customer, you go through and you save all of the blocks that you really like into a global reusable block, and you're ready to go. You drop them onto a page, and then you convert them to a regular block. That way you have your nice reusable block template set up. And you can do that throughout, you know, the entire site. I'm going to hit update one more time because I want to show you something. If we go into adding another block and we go to the reusable section, you can see that we can manage all reusable blocks. And that's going to take you to this screen where all of the blocks are stored. 
GDC, we can export and import a JSON file. So theoretically, you'd be able to export as a JSON file, save this to your uh, computer, and then import it on to another site. So if you spend all this time building out all of these reusable blocks, let's say for the dev theme for Generate Press, you could export the ones that you want to save into a, a JSON file, and then you'd be able to come back up here into your new site and import these um, so that you don't have to redo all of that work. Now, this is going to get better as time moves on, I'm assuming. Um, I'm assuming theme shops, especially those who are leveraging Gutenberg, are going to use this process a lot more, probably save themselves a lot of time too. Um, but I really hope they move in that direction. And uh, I think that Generate Blocks is a fantastic solution. If you want to keep things lightweight, and you don't want to build out an entire site using, well, a heavy page builder. And I don't mean heavy in terms of of code and optimizations, but just a lot of options. Uh, this is a great choice. I, you know, I recommend it. I recommend checking out Generate Press, checking out all of these new starter sites by Mike Oliver. He put a whole bunch into the mix. Quite honestly, I don't know what the relationship is. I don't know if anyone can apply to be a theme author at Generate Press. I, I'd imagine you could knock on the door and say, hey, I want to design some great themes. Um, but I like what Mike has done. I like what all of these uh, authors have done. But it's nice to see Generate Press uh, starting to forge ahead and starting to say, hey, look, we're going to invest in Gutenberg. And maybe there'll be more stuff uh, coming down the pipe for Elementor and Beaver Builder, maybe even Breezy. I've been enjoying that one too. But I really like what they have going on here with Generate Blocks and Gutenberg let me know what you think. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you want more. What are you doing with Generate Press these days? What are you doing with Generate Blocks? Let me know in the comments below. All right, we'll see you in the next video.